um, I was supposed to speak in front of this group of businessmen. And so they paraded me into this room and it's like all these white guys and suits and everything sitting around the table. You know how that is. Um, and I was supposed to present in front of them and which is what I did. I gave the speech that they had originally given me to do, which was not mine. It was not something I wrote or anything like that. But I got up and I was nervous and I gave the speech. And um, when I sat down, it was, you know, I, I felt some kind of way about it. But then I got called on the carpet for it. And she, basically the director told me she was like I need you to engage the audience and I I was like okay and she was like yeah because you know that was just you know it was just not acceptable so I was like engage the audience I said okay and so I go back to my office and I sit down at my desk now this was my first out of college it was my you know I, I I taught school did some substitute teaching and this was my first real job and so I sat down at the desk and I was like engage the audience I pulled out a dictionary and I looked up the word engage and I was like I thought I knew what that meant hmm. and I was like okay engage the audience engage the audience and so so I walked away not quite knowing what the hell it meant to engage the audience. So when I heard Brene Brown say in one of her books, clear is kind and unclear is unkind. So rich. It never dawned on me that, that you know, basically if you haven't, if, if it's not clear, you haven't said anything you know what I mean? And so, so her telling me to engage the audience and then grading me on something that I didn't understand, I, it was kind of, it was not fair. It wasn't, it wasn't fair. And so that's one of the things that it became a mantra for me. Um, especially when I'm dealing with people, clear is kind, unclear is unkind. Yeah, and, and and that makes so much sense because anytime I find myself in an ambiguous space, it is so, it doesn't feel good at all. Right, right. It does not feel good. So that is a very lifeline. That's one of those things I don't need to put on an index card because it is, it, and it's a reminder that if you don't feel clear about it, get some clarity or no step away <laughs> right and it's the responsibility of both people it's not oh, yeah. just the oh, person yeah. that's receiving it it's and that's I think one of the reasons why um we keep uh, you know I keep circling us back over what what we perceive as foundational stuff mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. like yeah. doing the forgiveness work and and really just kind of um, looking at what we think and how we think and to kind of dredge up the stuff that we maybe press down. You, you, you didn't come back in the, um, in the group this, this morning when somebody said, man, I was writing, I'm trying to work on my memoirs, but it got too painful. Mm -hmm. And, and so that painful means I hit a painful spot and most people will just back away without, really realizing that that pain says that I need to press, yeah. right? I need right. to press forward instead of retreating. Yeah. Get curious about it. How are you still here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good way of saying it. See? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um, so uh, good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Is that Erica? Who is that? Yes, that's Erica. Yeah. Hey, good morning. Good morning. So, so for me, when especially, you know, when when you touch something that and, and you know everybody has their different perceptions about this, right? Um, 
So some people will say, oh, she ain't ready. And, you know, be like, okay, you know, so that means we going to walk around that. We going to avoid that. And even if it means taking a, a drastic detour. Yes. I hate detours. <laughs> you know, <laughs> even if it means taking a drastic detour and then coming back. How, but you, you know, will be back. That's yes. principle number two. <laughs> <laughs> you will so, be back so um so it it becomes this thing of of less less when it comes up it's coming up for healing and um and and so we gotta we gotta stop and and do the healing so i'm not ready for principle number two <laughs> So wait a minute, let's let's back up. Good morning, y'all. Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yay, bright, beautiful day. Um, Noel, uh, I, I'm claiming it as a bright it beautiful is. day. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um yes, I, I saw Erica is doing a live challenge and she's gonna be challenging herself to go live every day. Oh. So I'm excited for her for that. Okay, yay. yay whoa uh-huh that's big wow so um so good morning and uh just just um knowing that in this moment god is right where you are everywhere mm -hmm. equally present in all through all as all yes and as we enter this space we just know that mm, that all that is spoken here is done so on purpose. It is filled with amazing light, an amazing amount of love and wisdom, wisdom that we didn't even know we had. Right. We ask as we, you know, as we enter in this space for God to just show out and show through us all that we need in this moment. We give thanks for this time and we bless it this, we bless this space wherever we are as a holy space. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so it is. Amen. 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 Thank you for being here. Um, so, so before we move on to, we, there, cause there's so much here to unpack, right? Clear is kind. Clear is kind. Unkind. That's right. Good. That's a word for me today. <laughs> well, I couldn't get solid in my, um, I couldn't get solid in my meditation. I, I was like, I had the little monkey minds. I had stuff going on. I could not get solid, but you know how you're some forms of meditation, you look for the space between the space. And so I caught a couple of those moments in my meditation mm -hmm. where I was like, not there. And then, you know, mm -hmm. anyway. so, but I couldn't just sit quiet today. I was just like all over. And so this message, this I love when things like this happen because it was like, oh, that's what that little blip in my ability to be nowhere and here at the same time was all about. Like that mm -hmm. message is so perfect for me. I oh, love good. it. Good, good, I love good, it. Good. It's been a miracle day. This whole morning has been angelic. Like, ugh. <laughs> so, but, but yeah, it's, um, but that was my way. That was my, as I was going to sleep, that was my thought. I woke in the midst of a, of a different dream. And, um, and I'm still unpacking that dream, mm. you know, um, I wrote it in my journal this morning and I'll let it continue to work on me a little bit. Um, but, but I think what it brought me to was this idea that I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about patterns of thought. Mm patterns of thought because you know it's one thing so if we're going back to this clear as kind unclear as unkind so it's one thing to be able to say that we think in habitual ways mm -hmm. but how do we how do we kind of thresh out that idea about patterns of thought and let me give you an example. I have this girlfriend who you know. Uh, I have I have shared her presence with you before, 
And I love and adore her. She is a treasure in my life, right? And um, I'll say, I don't know how many years ago, she got she got mad at me. Now I'm a Pisces. I'm a Pisces. She's a Scorpio. And yeah. wow. And okay. <laughs> she brings, I, I always think that there is a, a, a intensity that I share with Scorpios, like no other sign that, you know, that we I can imagine. Yeah. We got some, some juice that comes up. Um, but anyway, um, she got, she got mad at me. Um, and it caused her to not talk to me for, let's say 13 years, 13, oh. 14 years. Um, and it was, it was something that was not real, which was, which was the problem. Cause it wasn't real. She had a pattern of thought that every man that she dated cheated on her. Okay. And it was, it was hers and it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't real. I, I mean, it, it, it had to be real because it happened to her before. Yeah. Uh-huh. I but was going to, yeah. Make okay. it real every time she thought it right and so in that instance when she thought she got the idea fixed in her head that now i her friend who loved and adore her cheated with her guy mm -hmm. or, or with the ex guy it wasn't even it wasn't even a guy that um it was a guy who she had been involved with and I ran into him one day, which was what happened. I ran into him one day and he was like, I'm having a cookout, come through. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. I'll follow you. Cause I didn't even know where he lived. I was like, cool, I'll follow you, right? And so I go over there to the house and there's a bunch of people there, a bunch of people that I knew. And you know, I'm there chilling. And then it gets back to her then I had been at this party. So now all of a sudden I was messing with this dude. Mm -hmm. And, and 13, 14 years later, I'm still praying about her. That was one of the people who I set up and I just did the mantra, the Christ in me forgives and really, I mean, at first I wasn't doing that. Right. At first I was like, you know, every time I would call her, she just hang up on me. Oh, um, wow. She stopped taking my call. Girl, I, I became a pariah to her. She was just not having it. She wouldn't, she, I would still, when I would see her out someplace, I would walk up to her and I would talk to her and she would act like I wasn't even there. Um, she would get mad because her, her whole family loved me. She would get mad yeah. at them for talking to me. I mean, it was just, it was, it was, because it was her pattern of thought. And I never, first off, I didn't think she should be dealing with the dude. <laughs> I was like, this man, girl, I will, I'm quick to say when, when, uh, I'm quick to say to people, yeah, he ain't worthy of your time. I will say that to somebody just because you all of a sudden got digmatized does not mean that all of a sudden that erases all the stuff that he got going on. Mm -hmm. I will say, I, you know, I'm not, I, I'm going to say what I think, but I didn't think, you know, uh, but anyway, she was, she was all up in her stuff thinking that I had done something. And, um, and this was a pattern of thought. This was a pattern of thought for her. And, um, and no matter what I said, even if I could provide evidence and say, okay, and with him, you thought this and with the one before him, you thought that. And, and it's always somebody, it's always something. Maybe the, the real stuff is not that people are actually cheating on you. Maybe that it is your thinking. Mm -hmm. Well, it's both. Mm. 
because <laughs> our thoughts create our reality. So it's it is both. Is it really is both? And um, I think that that's the message that the biggest message is that our thoughts create our reality, and that our thoughts in the beginning gone unchecked are pathological. What mm-hmm. else could they be? All I know is what I know. My normal is where I come from, and so. But when you have, you know, friends, acquaintance or whatever that can share with you, but when you're ready, you're ready, but it's both. You create, you create an energy that magnetize people who do not um, honor monogamy and you create that environment for them to, to come and sit. It's comfortable in your space because you have that energy that matches that frequency. And so that would be that would make sense but then what happens to a person who is drowning they tend to kill the lifeguard if the lifeguard tries to go out there and save them so when people are like no you did it you did it you did it you have to just let them have their experience um because what are we gonna do but but okay but now here here's the thing i i think that here's the thing because this is one thing from my perspective right But say, for instance, I have a pattern of thought, too. I came up in a house with siblings. There was always, always, always people in the house. And I have brothers. So every time something came up missing, it was because somebody took it. It wouldn't be because I set it down in the wrong place. It was because somebody took it. That's a pattern of thought, too. Right. So um, when I was little, I was traumatized because they would take my dolls and they would take the head off the doll and then start playing with the head. They became a ball for them. Um, if you leave something in the refrigerator, they would eat it. Yeah. They would, it was just, it was like all the time something missing. Now I live alone. <laughs> so why is it? <laughs> That I have not given up that pattern of thought. <laughs> Would you blame it on the dog? <laughs> I started thinking Get a dog about so I can blame it on somebody. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be a gremlin because I, who, who took it? <laughs> <laughs> Girl, I I had um the Amish guys came to my house and they worked on my house downstairs. Oh and why did I send them a text message saying, <laughs> look, my drill bits are missing. <laughs> don't laugh, don't laugh, but, <laughs> but I told them <laughs> it's a pattern of thought. It is. I didn't Unless you really check yourself before you send out that text message, you send out the text message saying, you know, this seems rational to me. My my drill bits are missing. I can't find them. Could Y'all you the only possibly, ones that was here. Yeah, could you possibly have gotten them mixed in with your stuff? I seriously sent the damn thing. Excuse me. <laughs> Not saying to myself, saying this is one of your patterns of thought that when something is missing, that somebody had to take it rather than just saying you put it someplace and can't find it or Ooh. it's, it's, it's all made a mistake. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I confess. <laughs> And it showed up so you can have this moment. So you can have that moment. So, you know, everything is as it should be. But you got it. I bet you got that. Uh, you know. <laughs> and it'll come up again so you can get yes. it and you'll have it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think that, um, so whether it is infidelity or um, people who always believe somebody is lying to them, yeah. Um, I mean, we have so many different patterns of thought that we make it about other people rather than owning mm, this. This might be mine. 
right? Yeah. And the thing with that pattern of thought is that if you are self-aware mm-hmm. or aware that you have the pattern of thought, you begin to, once you become aware and awake, um, you begin to now question, is it my pattern of thought or is it my intuition? Is it, and so I love that um, clear and unclear because that will help too to do the process of elimination because one of the things that um, happens in recovery from trauma is that your knower gets, um, you know, I say to people now, I just say it to myself, you know, don't F with my knower just don't Mm. don't don't f with my knower that that bothers me don't run don't try to run game you know don't say anything but definitely don't try to play with me don't do that the reason why I take that position now is because I am learning to try to discern between a pattern of thought my own suspicion or is this my intuition it's my you know because my knower is a little jacked up or has worse was Mm -hmm. um because of trauma and so um and if you don't arrest those patterns of thoughts they become sicknesses and diseases Mm -hmm. Yeah. because then you start you know alzheimer's and dementia thinking you you know that you yeah you just gotta arrest them you have to arrest them but it's it's essential to arrest them if we're talking about energy healing and being able to recognize where i am in a space um, you got to be able to determine like, you know, who said that? Um, somebody said to me, uh, well, I'm only human. So you have to be patient with me. I said, where'd you get that from? Mm. But it, that's a statement that you just make all the time. That's your, that's your hall pass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For yeah. life, you know? Yeah. So yeah. Just challenging that reality. Like, yeah. Cause it's a real thing and it gets in our way. It gets yeah. in our way. It, it messes up 13 years of friendship. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, it, but it's interesting because, you know, um, er, Erica was making it, you know, she kind of made the thing like we like to ignore uh, that it's a pattern of our thought. Um, and I think that sometimes that pattern of thought appears as being intuitive right yeah. because it's our goal uh, yes. thing yes and so it sort of masquerades itself it kind of hides in particular ideas right um so our feelings of unworthiness or um the thought that even before somebody actually judges you that they're judging judging you you, mm-hmm. you project it onto them because that's your pattern. habitual mm-hmm. that's your pattern mm-hmm. of what you do Mm -hmm. Um, and sometimes our patterns are that, you know, we, we overcompensate, um, sometimes we, oh goodness, um, it seems like I was just talking to somebody about this too. I mean, there's so many things that we do that we don't recognize in our doing. You right. know, we don't, we don't recognize it as, um, we're no, sleepwalking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So even when it comes down to, um, Tony says that, uh, he was talking about the 80, 20 rule, you know, like mm. we got this idea that it, and I guess the 82, 80, 20 rule was a pattern that um, science, dis- they discovered through studying um, business that 80% of the work will be done by 20% of the people. And so there's this 80-20 that always applies in every situation that 80%, uh, the way he says that 80% is negative and 20% is positive. Um, but there's all of these patterns. Um, Gretchen says a pattern for me is hard to break as part of the overall abuse in a marriage. We mirror the fault 100% as our own versus the truth that all parties had some part to play. Yes. And our only responsibility is to find our part. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because we can't do anything about their part. 
it is what it is. And I often say, if they're not sitting here in this room, we can discuss the role that they play. But then after that, there is nothing else. All I can do is, while sitting here, even for my own self, when I look in the mirror, all I can do with is who's in the mirror. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And getting clear about that is the, the magic. Clear. Getting clear about that is the magic. That's the kindness that we owe to ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so Al asks, when does a pattern of thought become psychosis, which needs to be medically treated? But, but you know, um, and, and Gretchen said that's the hardest part for her to do. Um, but, but, you know, it's, it's interesting because like, say for instance, my, if my pattern of thought is, is if something is missing or if I can't find it right away that somebody took it, I don't know that that ever needs medical attention. What it needs is my attention (laughs) so that the moment I am saying to myself, you know, cause, cause no lie, Al. I have walked out of a store and walked where my car, I thought it was, it was right here. And automatically I'm thinking, who stole my darn car? (laughs) Only to find out, oh, there it is. (laughs) Like, right. (laughs) But you just have to get clear. (laughs) You just have to get clear clear and whoever you know is a pattern of thought turns to psychosis is because they they didn't they didn't render what was happening as a problem right 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 because right. you get to reverse that experience and say i'm not at home with my family i'm not at home with my brothers ain't nobody gonna take nothing from me it's just me i'm here right you start to tell your brain that's the ego protecting you you just tell your ego thank you but uh-huh. I'm safe because uh-huh. nobody can't nobody take nothing from me. Right. I'm good. I'm good. Right. The negativity bias, right? I think that there is some truth to 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 that. Mm-hmm. But but that kind of transcends because I got a girlfriend who um, she she always assumes that she's lost something. I mean, she goes into this panic, like she lost something again. And it's like, I just, I'm like, calm down. Can you just take a deep breath? Cause it's gotta be right here. You know, it's gotta be someplace close by. So we know so many folks who have all kinds of patterns of thought mm-hmm. and and it originated someplace. Mm-hmm. Oh, and, yeah. and in that originating someplace, what we're doing is, is and, and of course in Miracles talks about this, we take the past event and continuously project it into the future as if this pattern happens everywhere. And mm-hmm. until we start to, to heal this thing, we will continue to play out the same thing over and over again. Everybody. Because it, it served us on some on some part of our journey, it served us. And mm-hmm. so the, the brain, the limbic system remembered that. It's where the ego dwells. Like it remembered that for a safe place. So it remembers it. So it served its purpose when it served its purpose. We just haven't, we when you start to have that experience over and over and over again, it becomes a rut, like an inner record. A little groove and a, and a you know rep for those who know what records are it becomes this groove uh-huh. and so then you have to either wait for the groove to fill up with dust so the needle will just slide on over to the next phase or every time you come across that little groove it's going to dip down in there it's going to dip down in there it's going to dip down in there so you start filling it with a new truth uh-huh um Go ahead. So, so, so like when we are dealing with people who have like, say for instance, a trust issue or, um, or issues when it comes to money. Uh, so, mm-hmm. so another thing That's is, another is one? yeah, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. some people, their whole identity is so tied to money or position or uh, perceive or their perceptions about power um or the lack thereof because that's uh, yes, pathological right, thought. right 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 um and in our community it used to be a a big thing about respect you know um you know 
dissing me. Somebody might say the word dissing me. Why are they always dissing me? Or to step on their on your shoes was mm-hmm. dissing me. I mean, mm-hmm. there were certain patterns that people had, patterns of thought that they made real. Mm-hmm. And some people are sitting in jail because of these patterns of thinking that they have empowered, mm-hmm. you know, and, and never really never really question or even forget about the prison cell jails but living in jails all around here in their lives or in their communities have imprisoned themselves because of patterns of thoughts this stuff is not even real but for whatever reason you have a mindset that that is that it is and your life manifests your belief system Mm -hmm. all around you Mm -hmm. and you you uh you know, our lives are a manifestation of our patterns of thoughts. Yeah. Um, if they, especially the ones, go, check or unchecked, it, it is, that is what it is. And, and uh, yes, it yeah. is. Yeah. So awareness is everything. Mm-hmm. So it becomes, um, it becomes about us being able to kind of like look at things when, especially when we get stuck in something to be able to look at it and 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 say is is this mine and is this something that I always go to or is is it something else? Let me read what Al says because he wrote a, a a paragraph here. When a consistent pattern of thought, such as a narcissist, he or she is cheating on me or they stole from me, often is deflected to another either for attention or due to a chemical imbalance within the brain. Are we saying not to seek professional care? I'm not seeking no professional care because I'm- So the answer to that question is no. (laughs) And the other side of that question is that um, it doesn't always have to be a chemical imbalance. I am telling you, I would bet my career on it And I don't know if there's statistics out there, but I'll just tell you about my journey and the people that I service. Most patterns of thoughts are pathological and they come from other people giving us the information. Like, so you change the narrative. When you change the narrative, then you get to change the mind. And if people need medicine, that's fine. I am not anti-medicine. I have taken medicine myself. If you need medicine, take medicine. But the reality is, is that you got to change your thoughts. If you don't change your thoughts, there is no amount of medicine nor therapy that will service you. Like it won't happen because it's not real and it's a trauma. And the brain is just trying to protect itself from an experience that somebody didn't get protected from in the past. Like if you had had an experience where one of your brothers ate your food and you said something about it and it became a big deal where somebody came to your rescue and said, how dare you eat her food? Blah, 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 blah. And you felt safe and protected and cuddled. You may not even have that experience anymore. But when it keeps happening over and over again, you become anxious. The body prepares for the invasion. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I'm going to put this in here. I know it ain't going to be in here tomorrow. I put my name on it and it's still not here. <laughs> I grew up in that house too. <laughs> <laughs> I may have been guilty of eating some things. <laughs> and wait a minute. Well, eat it and put your name back on there and put it right back in the thing. And all you got is an empty container. <laughs> I love my brothers. But... <laughs> it caused trauma. No. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And, and you know, and, and so when... When I'm saying that I don't, I don't feel like I need to get help is because once, and and I think what, what happens is, is for each and every one of us, we have to be aware. You have to be aware. And and awareness, I think is key. And a, a lot of times what we don't do is, is we never challenge ourselves on what we see. It's so easy for us to see it. Like I knew with my friend that this was a pattern for her as a matter of fact i'm i i 
I don't even know why I'm telling y'all this, although it goes in with what I'm saying. She met a guy one time that she really, really liked. And she came over and she introduced him to me, to him to me. And she says, why don't y'all go ahead and do something now while I'm here? Cause I know it's going to happen. Oh, my heart like, breaks. Right. Oh, I was like, what is that? Um, it's just a pattern, you know yeah, now. Yeah. yeah. I was yeah. just like thinking, what? oh, that's just so terrible. Like, yeah. And, and no. And you don't know how much I love you. Right. But, but, you know, so yeah, I just was like, that was just not even something that would have entered into, into my thinking. Right. It wasn't and 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 the fact that I had a girlfriend too who um, had normalized domestic violence, she was like she said to me one time um, about a, a man that she divorced. She said to me one time, "He didn't love me enough to hit me," which jarred me. I had never heard of such a thing, and you know. So, so this was, and this was her thinking, this was her thought pattern, that pattern of thought that I'm thinking about and that we're talking about. And so sometimes you have to realize that over and over again, your boss comes into you and says, um, you know, can you come to my office this afternoon or I need to talk to you. And our pattern of thought is, it says, uh-oh, right? We about to get, and, and then we, we can't even do our work because our, our, we're so tied up in knots because our pattern is, is, is this ain't good. I'm in right? trouble. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we react energetically and sometimes in our verbiage, we react already as if we're under attack because that's all that pattern says to us is attack, 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 attack. Mm -hmm. So, and, that, and, and I, I, that was my, that was my pattern with, it was at work. And, and that's why I think that I'm such a hard worker and efficiency is important to me. But prior to that, this has always been who I am. My work ethic has always been this way. But through, throughout my entire career, whatever I was doing, if someone had anything to say or let me come into the office or whatever, oh my goodness, my whole body would become like chilly butterflies. And I am telling you, there has never been a time that somebody has called me into the office to reprimand me or to tell me that I've done something awful, blah, blah, blah. But every single time, and it has only been in the last 10 years, possibly 10 years where I have just been like I'm good at what I do and so whatever you know I just stopped the anxiety but I had to change the thought process and I started paying attention that every time somebody called me to the room I was anxious and, and then I had to learn where that came from because my mother was a single parent mm -hmm. and she was a yeller and a screamer mm -hmm. and she was hardly ever home we, we had a housekeeper um, because she worked and then she had her own personal life so it was pretty much all of us all the time so when she was present it was yelling screaming we didn't do this right you didn't do that right and I was the first born so a lot of responsibility was on me yard kids everything um and so when when I got spoken to or my mother screams to this day she will be like Stephanie you know and I just politely today, I just walk to where she is. I don't even respond. <laughs> I just go to wherever she is. And I say, yes, ma'am. <laughs> but before that meant something was not okay. So mm -hmm. that was in my pathology. It was in my DNA. It was inside of me. Mm -hmm. So whenever someone of authority wanted my attention, right. I had the visceral experience all over again. Like, what did I do? And I mean, for years until the last 10 years that I acknowledged that, well, whatever it is, it can't be bad because I'm integral. I handle my business. I ain't took nothing. I ain't told no lies, you know? So, yeah. but mm -hmm. 
but yeah. you have to do the work to, you know, it's, it's work to change your thought patterns. Right. And some of this is part of our DNA is, is, you know, the trauma that has been passed down over the years of being called on the carpet for whatever the thing is. But what I think we have to realize is, is this is a way of thinking and it's our way of thinking. It doesn't necessarily make it true. Right. And until we are able or develop the ability to ask ourselves, is this true? Yes. Right? Question. Yeah. Is this true? Is it true That's a question. that every man she meets cheats on her? Is that true? <laughs> you know? Um, and, and so it becomes this thing of, of yeah, it, whatever it is, if it is. So let me give a process for that. So anybody who's listening, what you okay. can do. So is it true? Yes or no. And then is it true about me? Mm. that's a great way to um help to like you know i don't know if you know about the dog whisper but whenever he wanted to get a dog's attention he would just do a touch and a sound like so and and so is it true about me stops the brain and says do i cheat on myself Mm -hmm. where have i cheated on myself what what is cheating what what does cheating mean for me right and a lot of times when you start doing that work, mm-hmm. then you all start you externalizing becomes so minimal because <laughs> you start doing a whole lot of internalizing. If I think somebody's cheating, then I'm cheating myself somewhere on my journey. Mm-hmm. Pay attention to where I'm cheating myself. Pay attention to where I'm not telling myself the truth. Tell, pay attention to where I'm saying yes when I really mean no. Mm. Yeah, yeah, all of that. Mm-hmm. So... So, and, and, and with, so let's say, for instance, the pattern of thought is um, uh, the uh, ideas around inadequacy, because we've got that serious. I mean, um, for so many of us, people walk around feeling as if they are inadequate or that they are being judged or why wouldn't they? Huh? Why wouldn't they what? Why wouldn't they why wouldn't they have that? Why wouldn't they have that experience of being judged or inadequate? If you know how our society does what it does between zero and kindergarten. Right. But but what happens is is that people allow that to keep them from moving forward, to keep them from doing exactly what it is that they want to do. Mm -hmm. The the pattern of thought is, is that they might as well not try. Like, like people will laugh or I don't even know what it is, but so many people are caught up on, on what they perceive others will think. Not even, I mean, and and so what? Like a thought is you know somebody thinking something is actually going to amount to a heel of beans but people will modify their lives not do things not show up to places because they're so worried about what another person will think Mm -hmm. and that is sad and it's in Sometimes, I don't know, I was going to say something blanket, but I won't say that. Sometimes it feels intentional that the programming is intentional, Um, you know, because of systemic um, oppression, that the, that the, those patterns were intentional. If they were intentional because they, people or sources or whatever knew that this would be the outcome down the line, or if it was intentional for whatever the other motives were, but it's intentional and it's systemic. And that is the part where if we could all understand that it was intentional, there's there's reasons behind why we do what we do and why we have the patterns that we have, 
And so you can, it's like the lady I was talking about in the tarot card, like you think you're in bondage, but you can break free from that. So, so let me tell you about an instant, uh, a thing that happened to me, because uh, I'm always talking about my stuff too. Um, I used to work for a hospital system, a, uh, yeah, a hospital system, I'll put it that way. And what I did for a, a while was medical coding. And I was really so good at it because I don't know why. Um, but one of the abilities that I always had was, is that I could remember, like most of these codes were maybe about five to six digits. And so somebody could, I, I was really, and I was really good at it, right? And so we would get the notes from the doctor and we would transcribe the notes or not even transcribe them. We would go through and read their stuff and then code it, you know, if for every kind of diagnosis or everything that was on there, we were making codes. So whether they were talking about the middle finger, there's a code for every joint on your body. You know, if it's your middle finger and then the second joint in your middle finger, there's a code for that. And so we were doing these codes and, um, and, and what people would do was because, you know, it, it this was, this, it wasn't all com we had computers, but we didn't have the internet like we have it now. Mm -hmm. And so um, we would have to, we would have these ICD-9 books that were like, like this with small writing in there that had all this code in there. And you would have to go through and you would have to find, you know, and, and then code it. So what, what people would do is, is there was a whole department what people would do is, is that they would come into my cubicle and they would call out things to me and I could tell them the number, exactly the number, and they would go through. And then the ones that I didn't know, then they would go back to their desk and look it up. That was, that was how it was. I, I did that when I was working in the storeroom too. Um, but that was, that was kind of how the morning went. So I would basically answer everybody's stuff and then we all go back and, you know, and do the ones that I didn't have. So the interesting thing about this whole thing was at a certain point, they come in and they said that they had, they were making changes in the department. Hmm. that now this job had to be done by nurses. That meant that they went to, uh, they graduated from college and they had their degree in nursing. Wow. And they had me train nurses for a position that I was no longer qualified to do. Wow. The pattern that these nurses picked up was the pattern that, that the other people were doing, that they would come to me and ask me for the first you know, hour of the day to what numbers this was, what corresponded. And I was then phased out of a position that I trained them for because I did not have that degree. So it is it's funny to me how we have we we have this pattern in our society that we want to begin to specialize in things. There was a nurse that my mother had, a wound care nurse, and she retired because she had been a nurse for 30, 40 years. And all of a sudden you needed to have a degree and her 30 or 40 years of, of experience didn't qualify her to continue to do something that she had always done. Mm. So, so there is this push through, and I don't want to just say through the educational system, but we have pushed people out of 
positions and out of things with this idea that now all of a sudden we're going to change the rules so that we make you have to jump through the hoops in order for you to do the very same thing that you have, you know. Mm -hmm. So, so I get that, I get that the pattern of thought is <laughs> that, and, and what is the pattern of thought out of that? That, oh, wait, wait a minute. A lot of things put, came up for me. Let me put a bookmark in that for a second. I, I shared something out of this particular book with somebody. And what they started asking me for was her credentials mm -hmm. on what gave her the authority to make such a statement. Mm -hmm. Not whether or not- It I, resonated with me. <laughs> right. Whether I could run it through my own understanding. Yes. Right? Because a lot of times what, what we have to do, we, we have so- disengaged ourselves from having common sense right from being able to listen or deep within the other side of it is i'm so tired i have given my authority and my uh talking about uh i think it's principle number two about power giving uh -huh. my power away so much that now when somebody speaks to me i think i imagine that their credentials come from what is behind there now whatever statures i've given their credentials because i have been duped if you will or been powerless let's use the same language been powerless before so long or it has such a strong impact on me so now everybody that shows up has to be credentialed in order for me to trust that because otherwise i'm not giving i you know i'm not surrendering my power to somebody who can't qualify check off the boxes to mm. protect myself um from falling for people who bully me around yeah so so yeah i i just think that this is a something a pattern of thought that we have to begin to challenge we have to when we can no longer hear the people at the margins we can't hear mm -hmm. right when we make it uh, when we put a concerted effort towards, and that's what it seems to me that we're trying to do, that we are trying to find ways to silence and marginalize people who haven't jumped through the hoops so we don't have to pay attention to them. Mm. And that is another pathology that our, that we are headed towards if we don't start to look at how we look at things. We do because, and that's intentional the, to create a pathology, to create suspicion, a house divided cannot stand. So mm -hmm. we, we get indoctrinated with so many messages that, and I think, you know, I don't know, uh, we get indoctrinated with so many messages that our soul cells are saying, this is not registering anymore. We're almost soul sick, if you will, because it's not in alignment with who we spiritually are. Mm -hmm. just doesn't make sense and so now people are like that movie crash we bumping into each other because we are super out of alignment we are super out of alignment yeah 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 so Gretchen says part of critical thinking skills are so lacking now. they are yeah and not and teaching I, it they just started bringing it back yeah yeah like and, 10 or 15 years ago critical thinking who takes critical thinking out of a out of a curriculum right or and or, then yeah and 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 at a, at, at a certain point i think that we have to begin to stir that up in people and and ask them what do you think because mm -hmm. that's how i feel about churches especially black churches or people churches where there are african-americans present i feel like the, the uh, spiritual leadership does have a responsibility because we have we have um given our allegiance to their leadership and i think that we do that, that spiritual leaders have a responsibility to to be unorthodox and be because they have the authority to ask the hard questions and just be like this is your homework assignment 
you know, kind of like that to change the, um, just to change the system up and, because you've got the authority to do that. The people, other people who have authority use it to their advantage. I feel like people, um, our pastors and leaders and spiritual leaders should ask the hard questions. They don't have to get, wait for a response, but I think the hard questions are fair because we do need a paradigm shift. Yeah. We, that's the only way, in my humble opinion, as I journey through this book, to change, you know, to be able to hear our intuition again and hear it from a place that's not a recording button that we push, the play button. Uh, well, I'm just human. I'm only human. Where'd you get that? Because mm, yeah. it, it's not even true, <laughs> right? Or, 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, but you know what? It is um, somebody had had asked a question and 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 said basically that that question was a cop out. It's like, why do you, you know, what else do you need to be, right? What what do you, what do you what else do you think? What kind of license do you think you need to have in order to show up and and show up in your fullness? What so what so what? That does not. It's not a license to be small. It's not a license to 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 yeah to play small because there is nothing else i mean just just do you yeah we do the planet a disservice when we wait for permission who was that was that you or i feel like it was you or my girlfriend michelle was saying about that was you we were talking about being bold enough to take a seat at the table to have a seat at the table okay yeah, I, I believe it was either you or my girlfriend Michelle. We were talking about um well, you know, I'm a, I'm needing permit, a <laughs> you know, needing permission a, to have a seat at the table I'm when we, we already are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you ain't gonna <laughs> silence me anymore. Yeah, that's yeah, that's, but, yeah, that that just and and I think that a lot of times um that's what people try to do to us is is that they try to figure out ways of um of silencing people and I really love the boldness um you know some people are really empowered and when you co come forward with um with your boldness that that gives people permission that's true you know? Yeah, um, showing up and you know it gives people permission to shine mm -hmm. um and so our <laughs> that's that's uh that's a marianne williamson quote um and and maybe we will cut it off right there let mm -hmm. me see where is my marianne book so i can um i can it's usually right here. I know it's about to bite me. It's going to bite me any second now um, because it is always present at hand. <laughs> Even as I say, somebody must. I was just going to say, I was like, I'm going to tease her right now. That might be a touchy subject. I'm like, maybe somebody took it. <laughs> because I don't see it and, <laughs> and it's it is just not I, my my book is always right here okay could I have could I have moved it for some reason mm -hmm. yes you could have mm. <laughs> I'm thinking to myself how highly unlikely is that that but okay oh my gosh <laughs> no they are not here <laughs> okay Gretchen asked are my brothers in the room <laughs> oh my goodness but but this is the kind of stuff that I do because I'm because because in my mind yeah, and it's literally just like that. And it's literally, you know, nobody is under a uh, under type of and nobody's under an illusion that changing patterns of thoughts is just like that. It literally you have to be mindful and you have to learn to laugh at yourself and pay, you know, just be it's it's comical at the end of the day. Um and, and 
core of my journey, it was comical at the end of the day when I really understood that I was not as powerless as I imagined myself to be. So it, it is, yeah, we can change our patterns of thought, but it does take work. It's not an effortless task. It's a lot of efforting and awareness. No. I'm going to find her book. I'm not seeing it. <laughs> I'm not seeing it. It's the gremlin. I cannot find <laughs> it. I it's cannot. the gremlin. <laughs> the return to love you. gremlins have I, invaded your space. I do not see my dog on book. And oh, I'm sorry, little girl. I don't see my book. Ah. I looked on the kitchen table. It's not on the kitchen table. I know it's not in my bed because it was not in my bed. Um, I didn't look in there just now, but I'll tell y'all tomorrow where I find it. <laughs> because it has got to be here because I always keep it at my desk. Y'all are watching you. <laughs> Always keep it in my desk. Anyway. You uh, find the quote and we'll start with that tomorrow. Uh, our greatest fear is that is not that we're inadequate. Our greatest fear is that we are powerful, powerful beyond, beyond our greatest belief. Yeah. Um, I can't even do it now. But, um, <laughs> And, and, you know, for the longest, it, it was attributed to being Nelson Mandela's quote, but it was actually um, one that was made by, written in Marianne Williamson's A Return to Love. And, um, and what we, I think what we have to do is just start to recognize that, um, you know, it's, it's, that part of the stuff that we get, um, part of our patterns of thinking can and should be changed, but can only do so with this thing of awareness. And um, somebody said, the unexamined life is not worth living. And we yes. have to really start to examine the things. You know, so one of the, one of the things that I like to do is I, you know, I, I have this feeling that it's my responsibility to break the chains, right? You do, and you live in that. And that is, yeah. Thank you. We just deep you. <laughs> That's true. I mean, it's been very consistent since I've known you. Yeah. Agree. Yeah. So, so we gotta, we gotta, you know, say that if this pattern doesn't work, it's gotta stop. It's gotta end with me, right? Let's let's put a period in that. Mm -hmm. And 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 so I'm not as bad as I used to be mm -hmm. um, with some of the some of the ways that I think. And I've recognized that, um, you know, people come into our lives sometimes to show us, to show mm -hmm. us that this is not, this is not what has to be, right? <laughs> Nicaea says, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah so so that's so funny let me see um let see i'm about to send, well, well look if it if it wasn't gonna take so long i would have sent you an invite to come in here and read the quote for me <laughs> um but that would that would that would take another uh five minutes for us to make that happen but um yeah so so yeah, we gotta break. We gotta break these chains um, and and recognize what's what's ours to heal and what's ours to do. Mm -hmm. And um, I like that. Yeah, yeah. And and if we take responsibility for it, you know. So you are not the money that you make, right? You are not that. You, your my. I remember my my mother telling me that. Um, 
that I was invaluable, that, that you couldn't put a price on me. And a lot of times what we do is, is we try to put a dollar figure on ourselves. We, we equate ourselves to, and, and, and just because the insurance companies try to do that does not yeah, make it, it right. Yes. <laughs> and so when you, when you recognize that, what was it that they said in, um, uh, what's that woman's name in, in that movie? you is wise oh the help you is yeah <laughs> you is beautiful <laughs> um you know start speaking words over yourself yes. and um and know that you are worthy know that you are loved know that you and all your junk all the stuff the flaws and the bumps and the humps and the rolls and all of that stuff, you just as you are. are you are perfect. still amazing. Perfect. Yes, <laughs> amazing. And just as you are supposed to be. Um, I put on my page the other day, there is a, um, a woman in France who is an amazing singer. And even though the song is oh, yeah. French, it's about body shaming. And she's actually in her video sitting there naked. And, um, and, you know, and she just was like, you know, calling her spirit back Ooh. because we can, we can allow, we can allow society, you know, they, they got their judgments and all of that stuff. They may judge you until the cows come home, find, judge you and find you wanting, right? But the thing is, is that you don't have to find yourself that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can, you can recognize how wonderful and special you are right here and right now with all your quirks and all your stuff. And it is so right now. Yes, all that stuff. And you is fine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> all right. So hi, thank you, Stephanie. This You're is welcome. Amazing. Yes. And thank you. Thank you, everybody, for thanks being everyone. Here. Thanks for the comments too. Yes, that was those, really yummy. Those are really good. Yes. And um and Al, I am not going to a, a therapist just because I can't find my book. <laughs> <laughs> So, have yeah. an amazing day everybody yes and we will see you here same time same place tomorrow all righty have a blessing blessed blessed day blessed day all, all right. right see you thanks stephanie you're welcome thank you The light of God surrounds us. The love of God envelops us. The power of God protects us and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever you are, God is and all is well. See you.